Okay, let's talk about thermoacoustic engines. So this uses heat and hot air to make sound waves, and the sound waves move this diaphragm up and down. If you would like to visualize how that happens, basically this is our combustor tube, this is our resonator tube, um, and then this is our diaphragm. Inside of here is similar to what's in the plates like uh, a Hoffler tube. So a Hoffler tube works by heat, cold, and it creates sound. Very similar to what's going on here. Um, it does work without a tube. I just recently added this tube and I wanna tell you why. But basically without this tube, it would have a little valve here and you would release it. And the way that you get this thing to start is that as you heat up the air inside, the air expands, it takes up more space. Less air takes up more space. So you need to release the valve. Eventually you get to a point where it's almost like 100% vacuum. Um, and there's just a small amount of air moving up and down. And so as the hot air rises, it cools because it's away from the heat source and then it falls back down and so on and so forth, causing the diaphragm to move. But it needs to be at somewhat of a vacuum because the diaphragm will move down when the air is down, right? So when the air is cold and it goes back to its normal compressed state, it's a vacuum. And when the air is heated, it's expanded. So the reason that I added this tube is because I did a test earlier, uh, maybe yesterday the day before, and I had a six foot, six inch, 1.8 inch or one eighth inch tube. Um, and then I used that as my resonator tube. So basically it's like making this entire engine longer by six feet, six inches, right? Um, so what I did was I took the math. I mean, that, that obviously worked. It worked uh, both out of water and in water. I have a glass of water today. I wanna to show you why but I wanna talk a little bit more about this. So there's the six foot, six inch tube has a total space inside of 0 0.817 cubic inches, right? So very, very tiny tube, uh, very long, still less than an inch of cubic space. So what that less than an inch of cubic space allows it to do is that hot air comes up here and it goes over here and it sucks back and forth. So it has some give basically. And then when you put it inside of water, it actually acts as a one-way valve, but again, with that necessary give, right? So I can't just put a one-way valve on here. I've tried that. And basically it'll push out all that air and it'll never get back into the sucking motion. So the diaphragm will just not move at all. The reason that it does work with water is because as you're heating it, right? The air is expanding, the air bubbles out of here. Once the air bubbles leave, it can't go back in, right? So you get that maximum, basically it's like the perfect percentage of hot air filling this container. But once that air moves up or into the hose and it compresses, it then gets pulled back into the, back into the engine by vacuum and the cycle repeats itself. So the reason that you wanna use water is because that suction is actually enough to drain this whole cup. This is 100% vacuum over here. So, I mean, if I left it after running the engine, it will, it will drink all of this and it will move into the into the engine. Um, but it's great because you'll see as it's running, the water will move up an inch or so. Um, and that's just the oscillation of the air inside as it's doing its, its thing. So I, I think that the tube makes it more powerful um, and gives it a lot more thrust and reliability, honestly, because before I would run it, I had to you know release some gas and so on and so forth. And that's not a very good option if you have to constantly monitor your engine. So. Let's heat it up and give it a try. All right, so as I heat this up with a blowtorch, you are going to see air bubbles come out of the tube. And the more air bubbles, the closer we are to running it. It just, should just start by itself. Let's give it a try. There you go. So if you could see this, the diaphragm on top is just slightly moving, but it's definitely not where it needs to be. So we're going to just continue to run it. All of that excess air is leaving and it can't come back in now. So eventually we're going to get to a point and the diaphragm almost moves, but then not quite. So we're just going to keep heating it. You know what I just realized? I need to put this on top of my ceramic or I'm gonna burn my table, so. 
Sorry about that. Okay. So it's just going to continue to run harder and harder because it's getting rid of all that excess air. So the vacuum is getting stronger and stronger. As you can see, the, the amplitude of the diaphragm has already risen. And you can just hear the water. See if it's being sucked up at all. Mm, not yet. Let's see how much electricity it can produce. Okay, we are about 18 even. Now, I hate when people don't show all the connections, so here is the multimeter, prong one, prong two, zoom out, follow them up, they are literally connected to the coil, that is your magnet. All right. So, unfortunately, my prototype model does not have any cooling, and once the entire unit becomes hot, it no longer works. So, um, I do have a final design. It's being manufactured right now and that one will incorporate cooling and it'll all be one single unit and it'll just be plug and play which is just great including the spool actually getting the spool manufactured as well uh, these are all tri-clamp fittings so it'll come and just clamp right on the top it'll be a, it'll be a beautiful engine honestly i don't say so myself but uh yeah I'm, if we wait here long enough we can see the water just get sucked right in